happening good morning everybody good morning everybody it's gonna sing somewhere over the rainbow for us <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> i don't know what are you doing we were trying to figure out what that was about in your latest update <laughs> well, wh why are you surprised attacking me with it you're the first, <laughs> apparently you're the first person to notice. No one said Steve, anything about Steve's that. Steve's the one that noticed. I didn't Steve see noticed it. Steve it. saw it. <laughs> I didn't see it. But we went to great pains this morning to find it on your video. And put it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I'm sitting here for like five minutes, and these guys are talking back and forth where this thing is. One guy's watching one part of the video. The other guy's watching the other part of the video. Uh and it, it flashes on the screen for like a second or two. Right. Well, I mean, so there, there's a there's a couple things I'll say about it just since, since this topic has come up. Uh, <laughs> there, If you actually listen to the music that's going on during that section, the music is very reminiscent of Pink Floyd's time <coughs> where there's a lot of weird stuff going on. And if you've ever watched... Uh, done the the wizard of oz overlaid on top of pink floyd's dark side of the moon there's a section in there where when she does this julie garland looks across like that it, it's perfectly in sync with the music so that was part of it is it just reminded me of that and i thought you know this would be also something that for those people who actually watch the whole video instead of skipping through and seeing here's where he was at the beginning here's where he's at at the end there's a little what, what do you call them easter egg in there yeah, so yeah. who watches the whole movie and might provide commentary in the comments <laughs> so, well, Steve, so nobody Steve it. It. i missed it so i'm the only one that noticed that Are apparently you you're the only one that's watched the whole video steve <laughs> I watched the whole thing, but I probably wasn't looking at the screen when it came on. Because, right. I mean, you were putting plywood down, so it's not like I had to watch how you did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I well, here's the way. I, 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 I was watching, and then it flashed on, and I was like, what? I had to back it up to see if I was imagining it. It's like, uh, anyway, it. good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> good to see you here. <clears throat> Hope you like that too. <laughs> uh, my wife said, "You guys, if you guys couldn't pick on each other, you wouldn't have any fun." And that's probably no. part of it. <laughs> anyway, Steve, why don't you tell us who's here? Oh, uh, Buddy's here. Good morning. Got Rob T. Man, Gerald Stewart, JD Grandpa Rails. Good morning, my buddy Bernard Digger. How are you doing, Lynn McCurdy? Chuck, CDP1965, John Tanzillo, Steve Anderson. Good morning, Steve. Uh, let's see. We've got, I know we've got more here. Steve Childers. Good morning, Steve. <clears throat> um, let's see. Going down. Dave Todd. Oh, boy. We've got to get you back on. Do something. John Benecki. Is that how you say that? Anyway, Dave, Dave BNSF. Allison. Good morning, Allie. Uh, we got Andy. Good morning, Andy. Uh, Thomas. Good morning, Thomas Moore. Uh, let's see. I know there's more. Let's go down here. Uh, we got Gail in there. Uh-oh, Gail. Chris Crew, my buddy Chris. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, Roy Hardwick. Hey, Roy, where are you at? Um, Roy's actually at home this weekend, I think. Is he? Wow. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> We're all over the rainbow. Yeah, yeah, all, all messing with Dennis. Um, I've been kind of glad Steve came up with that because it, <laughs> it made my morning. Well, the other thing I, had, I didn't see it at all. You yeah. were measuring the distant, the, the height of your. Yeah, it was the top of the bottom. The, the top of the bottom, or the bottom of the top. <laughs> the bottom of the top. The bottom of the top. The top ledger, the bottom. The top of the bottom. 
<laughs> your, your your little analog scene, whatever that is. I don't yeah. know. That's probably probably didn't use the term one. correctly, but hey, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I'm know. one of those people that once I start talking, there's no telling What's what I out? might say. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, if, if, if you're doing these videos, anybody that does these videos and you start talking, you know that you're either going to sound like an idiot and start over, you know, six or seven right. different times, <laughs> or you just let it happen. And if it's <laughs> bad enough, maybe you can address it with a comment you know, in the the text. Yeah, there's many times in my videos where people will say something. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, it's like, I have to go back and either watch the video and see what they're talking about or see what I said, because I totally forget, you know. Uh, Yeah, well, that's like this last video I did, last update I did. That was the first time I did it with two, two shots, and I didn't edit any of it. Uh, that's the first time I've done a video where I didn't have to edit. And the only reason I even did two different shots is because I moved the camera over to the end. But I was, I didn't even realize I didn't have to edit it until I got into editing and I'm watching it going, well, there's nothing here I got to cut out. <laughs> I didn't hem haw a lot. <clears throat> I didn't hem haw a lot or anything like that, which I normally have to cut out, you know, I'd restart, but I didn't do any of that. So. It was kind of weird. Um, Steve Anderson what? asked something. Claude and Dennis, how close are you all to Wichita? I'm about two hours. Um, Steve, I'm, Dennis is probably a little further than that. Yeah, I think I'm three hours to Wichita. Yeah, at least a couple hours, maybe a little who, bit more. Who was that. asking? Steve hey, Johnson. John Tanzilla, you can ask questions over there. It's okay. I don't know why he's asking that unless he's getting ready to go to Wichita. But but who was asking? Steve Anderson. Oh, okay. Um, Good morning, Keith. My guess is he's going to go down there and see if he can put their airplanes back together. <laughs> find out <laughs> find out why they're coming apart. You know? <laughs> something like that. Hey, did did I miss something? Is Sh- is Shannon in town? Chow? Because Steve Sh- Anderson- Shannon did. Sing. Sing. Did post in chat, but I I took oh, it that he was going to go to sleep instead of come on. <laughs> I didn't I didn't even see him. I think I, I think we've got a, a time change coming up, and he said he might be on next week. Oh, cool. okay, yeah. Well, um, remind me to send him the link, and we'll get him on the show. Um, I, I haven't been sending it to him because he's you know the time's been so far off that I know he's not getting up. Yeah. And three boys will wear you out real quick, I'm sure. Boy, no kidding. Without a doubt. Uh, you, you notice that ever since he had three kids, we hardly ever see him anymore? Yeah, that's what I mean. That's why yeah. I wasn't sending the link. Hey, Steve, why did you want to know how far we were from Wichita? He's, I think he's visiting out there or something. Hey, Roy, I think uh, Boeing's getting ready to take Spirit back over from what I heard. Of course, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> what well, I hear doesn't I mean anything. I didn't much. realize Boeing wasn't in Wichita anymore, didn't they? Used to be. Yeah, it's well. It, I think they split off, and Spirit is uh, the company that took over that part that builds part of the airplanes, the airframes for them, and then sends them up to uh, Seattle. Something like that, anyway. I've just watched in bits and pieces. I've, you know, I've watched the whole thing. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I want to know why uh, Steve or why Anderson wants us to uh, come to Wichita, or why Anderson, Anderson's just weird. Anyway, so that's just down the street. Now Mike says, "What's up in Wichita?" That's just down the street from me. It's down the street from you. Hmm. I, I think. I think they Mike got, will be a little got, further away from Wichita than we are because I know he's oh he's in yeah he's six or seven hours west of me <laughs> yeah he, yeah he's in Denver <laughs> quite a bit different okay well here here's his answer because there are many trips coming up to to Wichita area over the next year or so have already sent three people there ah okay well yeah we're you know we're both at least a couple, three hours from, from there. 
Yeah, but uh, I guess you're talking about dropping by and seeing us. It's it would close. be a it would be a day trip for you from there. Yeah, it's close. Cool day. Yeah, be a good hours. long day. Six about six hours driving. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you guys, hit the thumbs up, man. We got 32 people in chat and only 17 thumbs up. What's up with you slackers? Man. <laughs> they wanted Dennis to sing somewhere over the rainbow. You don't want to hear me sing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but Jerry was going to sing it earlier. I, I didn't want to hear that either. <laughs> well, you are going to show us what you've done, Dennis, right? Do what? You're going to show us what more you've done. Sent your yeah. video. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so get up and show us. I do want. I want to share something. Uh, since you asked. So, on uh, on my Otter Creek Facebook page, whatever you call them, I got a I got an email or a, a direct message from a guy named Paul. I'm not sure what his last name is, but uh, he is. I guess the owner of, oh, that's backwards, it's Ironworks Models, and he said, I'd like to send you some free samples, and I'm like, I'm all about free stuff, so he sent me some corrugated roofing, it's kind of blown that's out, cool. isn't it? Ironworks, uh, huh? And this, this measures uh, eight feet wide. Is that, is that plastic? Uh... You know, I haven't opened it up yet. I think it is. What's the back say? Uh, oh, no, made from high quality artist paper. Oh, okay. Yeah, represent a full standard two foot by eight foot panels cut eight inch strips in, in a quarter inch panels. So he sent me that, which is really all I thought I was going to get. Uh, but he also... He's got some 3D printed stuff. He's got, uh, got some, <coughs> some chairs. No hey, what's your What's your Facebook page? Uh, Otter Creek in Rio Grande. And he got me some picnic yeah, right there. Picnic benches. See, uh, and then some pot belly stoves. Oh, cool! Yeah. So Ironworks, Ironworks models. Ironworks models. Now he doesn't have a lot of stuff on there yet, uh, and also he also got me some shake shingles, which I go. I haven't looked at the price point of any of this, you know, to pay attention to it yet. These look like they're pretty good. I'm looking forward to, to using these and the uh, <clears throat> the corrugated roofing, you know, to kind of see how that works out. You see so, what uh, Michael McCarville said? It's made by Paul Reinhardt. Uh, Heath, Paul I invited Reinhardt. you. Uh, I invited you oh, to the Oh, awesome. He's awesome. in all his kits now. Well, that's pretty cool. Awesome. So this guy must follow your channel then. Yeah, he he, uh, he didn't. I don't think he put it anywhere in here, but he did say that he's he's a fan of the channel. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I didn't know you had a Facebook page. I mean, yeah, but... well, you know, I, I have a. The only reason I'm on Facebook ever is <laughs> is just just for the model railroad stuff, pretty much. You know, yeah, I, I, I just follow recently, I just half, recently. half a dozen different pages. I follow, you know, Mike. Uh, there's a HON narrow gauge channel that I follow. Right. Uh, uh, I do the section, uh, second section. I follow them. There's a couple others, you know, but that's really the only. And, you know, the whole thing with the Facebook page is you can't. You're not going to project your page or anything on your page unless you're willing to pay them a little bit of money. So I, I refuse to pay for advertisement. So it, it is what it is. If somebody, the link is in my channel. You know, it's not yeah, like you couldn't find, find it from if you were looking at, looking at my channel on YouTube. <clears throat> and that's basically who you want to join your Facebook page. Right. People that 
go to your channel. You, you right. Don't want them. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I just recently got back on Facebook yeah. because we're going on this family cruise, and they've got they tend to get a group page for every cruise. And so whatever date you're going and whatever ship you're on, and then everybody that's going on there can get on that same group and, and ask questions and, and talk about meeting up or whatever they're going to do. So yeah, it's, it's good for that, but I don't, I don't get on their peruse very much. Um, most of my Facebook stuff is family stuff. Now I did put my last update, a link on Facebook, um, on my channel, but on my page. Yeah. yeah. If you go to my page, you'll say I haven't been in there in a long time. <laughs> I, I, this time, I didn't link my latest video to my Facebook page. I've, there's there's two people, give or take, that apparently just love to give me a thumbs down. <laughs> I, I figure it's somebody who knows me on Facebook and is just being, you know, a jerk or whatever. So I thought, well, maybe if I don't share it on my page, maybe they won't know that apparently it didn't work. I still got a thumbs down. Maybe they saw Judy Garland and thought, what's this stupid stuff? <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, that's where you'd get a thumbs up from me if I'd have seen it, doesn't it? <laughs> but going here, you find got some class in the thing. Uh, anyway, so I didn't get a whole lot done with mine, but now if you remember my update, the seam block i did get that plastered um got the plaster cloth over it and of course i got paper towels draped everywhere in there now so you can't really see anything because i'm still doing plaster then i'll go in and i'll paint that uh to get that part of it done <clears throat> but it's yeah it's coming along come along slow slowly but surely yeah. um because i'm looking forward to getting all that finished so i can Start doing all the little things that I've been wanting, to, that I've been holding off of doing. Have you done any running of trains at all? Just to test it up there, you know. I ran, I ran, uh, I ran one of the uh, C19s over with some cars from the mining district over across the bridge and up onto that new part, and it sits up there now. But I did that so I could get in there and check all the all the places where I'd cut it and everything, and. Uh, so I could adjust any of that that I needed to do before I started putting any kind of ballast in or anything like that. Yeah. And it seems to be working just fine, pushing and pulling cars across it. So um, that's a good thing. Very good. But I did start, I did do something. I started taking all the, all the buildings that I had built for up there uh, and kind of arranging them, seeing where I want everything. So I know where I want to put my road and, and that sort of thing. Um, cause I only had one, the brewery was the only spot that had a spot designated because it has a side to it and everything else, you know, other than the little small station didn't have any set place to be. So I, I did get up there and kind of played checkers with the, with all the buildings and found out that I, there's some that I'm going to have to add to scratch build to. Um, which ought to be fun to do, but see, that's one of those things that's going to wait until I'm a little further along before I get down and start doing that because it's a place yeah, that's now true. don't need a full full building out there. Yeah. <clears throat> to Heath's question, he asked if you put lights on your staging yard. I was thinking that you should put some little flasher so it looks like lightning, little flashes <laughs> right there. Well, I guess I guess we can we can kind of take a look at uh, let me. Are you going to have uh, aliens on your uh, staging area? Aliens? Yeah, is that like Area 51? <laughs> <laughs> so, just kind of taking a look at, at what I did. Now, this area in here somewhere probably between, let me move this. Probably between this leg and that leg is going to be the bulk of the electronics for this upper section and probably going this way. I'm not 100% sure about that. Man, but, uh, you put a lot of wiring to do, don't you? 
Yeah, well, I mean, it won't be too bad. It won't be anything. It won't be as bad as what I had to do down here for sure. So will will you be able to flip that over and do all your wiring work, or you got? Yeah. Work? So like right now, uh, let's see if I can't hold this with one hand. Right now, these are they're just in there, right? right. They're they're right. supporting, but they're not they're not glued anywhere yet because i don't know exactly where the wires may go yeah are you how are you going to fasten your your what would you call that sub road bed up there your top layer to your structures you know to your support you're going to screw through the top or screw from the bottom i believe i'm just going to glue them that's my plan you're just going to glue it down yep okay. Okay. because you know all of they only need to support there's no lateral no issue. Uh -uh. so so they you could maybe even get away with just if sitting there if there was enough weight on them but uh, he he asked about the lighting so this is what i'm going to do there group light it's like disco light do what it's like disco light <laughs> yeah but i've i've got an idea of how I'm going to go about doing it. I'm just still kind of working on it. And then I did things a little different on this end, which it's the same concept, but all of this area between here and here, that's where my tortoises are going to end up landing for this end of the ladder. So I intentionally left this a little a little open. I may introduce some support there later once I know exactly where the tortoises are, but I really don't think I need it. Hmm. And the other thing that might be kind of notable is that this eight sheet of plywood ended up being three inches further that way than this one. And what the total length of the run is this way. So I ended up with a gap and I made sure that that gap was here rather than down there because the wall is not square. Yeah. So I made sure that the wood is square on that end because my risers down here, uh, I won't need to attach them to the ledger board. I mean, to the, to this, I will just attach them to the ledge board and I probably will use screws on those. <clears throat> and you can see that's, that's exactly how, how far back everything is. There's no way I can reach it. But the plan is once I figure out the backdrop and you know this piece of spline running the high line how where exactly it comes across here that's all all needs to be worked out and then where this is going to go so that's kind of where i'm at at the moment is figuring out the track first and then once i figure out the track then i'm going to figure out what i'm going to do with the backdrop because i part of me would like to figure out a way maybe to make this section the backdrop removable so if i do have an issue back there i could come in with my top side creeper and a pair of tongs and grab something that if i have an issue back there way back there <laughs> it'll happen i'm sure since it's never happened before oh it'll wait it'll wait till you get it all fastened down yes exactly that's, that's what murphy is planning, I have no doubt. So, Heath just wanted to know if you said you were a creeper. Yep, just ask my wife. <laughs> a, cre a creepy creeper. I said that's just creepy. Uh, oh, what Mike says, they are releasing a white pass in Yukon diesel in HLN3. Who, who's, who's releasing it, Mike? I don't hear anything about that. Not that I want one, but 
I do have a couple of uh, Yukon and White Pass cars though from microtrains, but I don't, I don't, I won't ever got these one again. Again, <clears throat> microtrains. I've, I've, I've seen them, but I have never pulled the trigger on getting one just because I don't think there would be one on my road. Yeah, micro, microtrains makes cars in your scale. They, they made to. They used to. Yeah, they, they used they to. Don't longer. No and way. they're not bad. They're not as good as Blackstones. Blackstones are much more detailed, but they're not bad starting starting pop spot where you can you know make them more detailed. Um, but they're probably not as expensive. No, they were a lot cheaper. Even even yeah. well, when I bought mine, I think I paid twenty five, twenty five thirty bucks at the most for mine. How much? Are I black? bought mine before pandemic yeah. too. You, 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 you can get one now for about forty, which is about as cheap as you can get. You get anything, yeah. Any anything in H O N that's ready to run. Ready to run, yeah. How uh, much are the every, most everything is kits. How much are the Blackstones? Oh. If you're lucky, you can get one for sixty five dollars. Yeah. And if it's a passenger car, it's going to be close to a hundred. If you're really lucky, you can get one for free. <laughs> Did you get one for free? As a matter of fact, well, yes and no. Yeah. So what, what happened was is, is there was one on sale for $65, so I purchased it. And within 24 hours, uh, within 24 <laughs> within 24 hours, the order gets canceled. You know, I, I got a message from the person I bought it from saying, hey. Uh, I'll get this out in the mail tomorrow morning. Well, while I'm at work, I at lunch, I look and order is canceled. You've been refunded your your sixty five dollars. Well, well, that stinks. And the message said I couldn't find it. Yada 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 yada. That happens. I I think that's happened to me at least four times in the last year yeah. that I've purchased something and then I get told that oh I couldn't find it. I'm sorry. Uh, I never really had it. You know, and then 10 days later, you know, is when you get that message. Yeah. So I went ahead and left feedback. I left negative feedback. And yesterday, this shows up in the mail, <laughs> which is what I ordered that they said they couldn't find. Yeah. So I thought, well, I went in and I, I did a follow up on my feedback and said, Hey, there must have been some miscommunication. The item did show up and I did get a refund. And then, so I bought another one last night because they had multiple for sale and met message because she also left a message said, I want, I want to give you one for free. Uh -huh. You know, so I, because that message I didn't see until this morning. So I went ahead Damn. and purchased another one before I got that message. And I thought, well, if they don't want to send me a car because they've already sent yeah. me a car for free, I will let them keep my money and I will be yeah. fine. Happy. At least you yeah. made an honest attempt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I was good. At least it worked out. I was out. surprised when it showed up in the mail. Here well, what probably happened was she probably had so many that she shipped out and she shipped it out and didn't realize she had shipped it out. I've, I've seen them do that before, too. I've, I also kind of wondered maybe if there wasn't two people in the shop that weren't talking to each other about what had gone out, what hadn't gone out. Yeah. But it, it looks like it's a consignment store, which I'm always leery of consignment stores because uh, they don't always actually know what they have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But for you can't you can't <laughs> find a Blackstone for sixty five dollars. So no. I, I, I've got a couple of Blackstone hoppers, not hoppers, uh, gondolas, and uh, I think I paid 45 or 50 bucks for them. Just got lucky and found them for that. Um, because she, she, like you said, $65, people scarf them up for that. And there's some people out there bought a whole bunch of them, I guess, when they first came out. And never did anything with them, and now they've got all these 
all these brand new cars that aren't being made anymore. Mm -hmm. So if, if Blackstone didn't build any more locos, just would make some more cars, it'd be nice. But then all that stuff's made yeah. in China, and I don't know if they'll ever get back to. Keep hoping that they will find some other way to produce. You know, like maybe out of Japan or Korea. Somewhere. It sounds like uh, there's a niche there that needs to be filled and your people are willing to pay whatever it is for it. That's just how I interpret it. Well, I mean, yeah. when Blackstone first came onto the market, they were really arguably one of the first ready to run producers of, of rolling stock at all. I don't, I mean, there may Micro, have been. Uh, yeah. Micro trains had, had some, but the there again the blackstone are much better quality mm -hmm. um you don't have to do anything to them they're ready to run uh, other than maybe weather them just a little bit and some of them were I'm weathered at the factory yeah this this one's pretty <clears> wet <throat> so but because it's you know it was such a small niche for years and years and years uh it used to be you had to buy your engines from japan or korea brass engines and paint them yourself right and then you had to build everything else out of kits or scratch building because it just yeah. wasn't anything in rolling stock. Well, it, and and Mike noted that San Juan does have some ready to run stuff, but they're one hundred and twenty dollars, one hundred and thirty dollars yeah. a car. And to me, that's not ready to run. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, if if you've got the wallet, that you could buy a whole train's worth of tank cars. You know, at one hundred and thirty dollars each, maybe they're ready to run. But I would—I've got three of the precision scale kits for tank cars. Uh, eventually, I'll get around to working on kits, but I—I'm I, not going to spend one hundred twenty-nine dollars on one car, even if it's brass. Just not going to yeah. do it. Well, you've seen all the all the kits I have out there, and I've got one of the. Uh, Oh, real grand models. I got the Marion Steam Shuttle. Well, I bought it. I think I paid $40 for it. I couldn't believe I found one that was that cheap. And it, it was a brand new kit, complete kit. But it was going for almost $100 any place, you know, that you saw it. And so that's one reason I scarfed it up. Whether I'll ever build it, I have no idea. I'm, I may not because I really don't have any place to put it on the layout. What is it again? It's the Marion steam shovel, like you'd use in a quarry, oh, you know, yeah. scoop type shovel. Might as well uh, it's a really nice looking kit. I've seen the completed models and they've got a lot of detail stuff to them, but I just don't know that I have any place to use it on the layout. Might as well sell it, get some money out of it. Well, I probably will. It was kind of like when I bought the track, you know, I bought those 35 pieces of track before I decided to use flex track on the top level. And I thought well, I got such a good deal on it at the time. I thought I'll end up turning around and selling this and making some money from it. Well, I ended up using it all and ended up buying even more flex track to finish out. And I still got you some pieces, Dennis, left over. Um, so next time you're over this way, you can have them. Uh, because they're again, they're they're not easy to find. And they, I guess, the micro train, not micro trains. Uh, Microengineering. Micro, Micro engineering. Okay. Yeah. Somebody bought them. So they're rampant protection. I, I think they have moved locations and I, I think that their their issues may have been resolved. I'm hoping that they're I haven't looked because I don't need any track at the moment. I might yeah. after I get this finished, probably will, if maybe, I can get it finished. Maybe yeah, I, I read the information somewhere. I don't remember where I saw it, but somebody Somebody has bought uh, the company and they're moving it and going to ramp back up. Because I, I think there was a question in there. It might have, must have been in a forum or something. Because uh, there was a question of they wanted to know what did people want them to start first. Um, oh, what, that's what was everybody looking for the most was what were they were going to start with first. So Maybe they'll start making things that Mike, our engineer, didn't make. You know, that, so, you, know, like, uh, you know, bigger you know. turnouts or something, or 
Yeah. You know. That's a possibility. Yeah. Anyway. Maybe they'll do the look <clears throat> in yard. Maybe they'll do the yard ladder in N scale. That yeah. would be I don't know. They, they don't Mike know. says micro engineering move has been done and they are shipping regularly. My local shop keeps getting shipments in and I keep buying stuff. <laughs> I'm I'm jealous that he's got a local shop there that actually stocks stuff like that. Because all we have here is Hobby Lobby and not Hobby, well, Hobby Lobby, not Hobby Lobby so much as um, Hobby Town. Yeah. But Hobby I would Town expect or, Colorado might have a higher per capita narrow gauge model railroader than we do here in Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, it's always been it's always been big in model railroading. I think on the front range there. I think uh, I don't know if my local shop, which is Yankee Dabbler, carries H O N three stuff, but they do carry micro engineering stuff. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is fine. You know, not only do you, here I don't have anybody that carries any train stuff other than Bachman or Tyco. Yeah. Um. So unless you're going to buy that, you got to order stuff. And you might could order from them, but if I'm going to order from them, I might as well order and have it sent straight to my house, um, you know, from Yankee Dabbler or somebody like that. But there right. again, some of those places, like you said, don't carry HON3 stuff. So if it has to be that, like track or cars or engines, uh, everything else is HO. So, you know, all your, all your kits and everything else are HO. Uh, and you may just have to adjust them a little bit for height or whatever, but... Uh, so there's no, no online hobby store, like train store, that kind of specializes in H O N three, or like your odd pages like that. There's well, there was one that I was buying all of my all of my tortoises from because he had a fantastic price on them. I was paying like eighty bucks for a six pack. Um, for a long time, I bought most of mine through him and he finally jumped prices up. So I don't know, I don't know if they were the older, the older models of tortoises, but it was uh, Colorado <clears throat> narrow gauge, I think was the name of it. Um, but he would have consignment stuff like engines and stuff like that, or cars, but he sold kits, he sold track, microengineering stuff. Um, and here lately, I don't think he's in business anymore. Yeah, I've I looked in a long time. The last time I looked, I couldn't find his page. So, did you say that Hobby Town is still in business? Hobby Town? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they're a they're a nationwide. They're like Kmart or, or Walmart or something like that for hobby stuff. They sell more RC stuff than anything else. They is sell. That the same, is that the same company? Because I I've got really old Hobby Town draw, HO drives that had. Uh, Carry shell. No, I don't think it's. I don't think it's the same thing. Okay, that's yeah. That's these are these are these are brick and mortar stores. Oh, okay. And they sell everything from crayons and and yeah. uh, disc, you know, disc golf frisbees and oh, okay. wood little wood kits for young kids, all the way up to RC stuff. They sell trains yeah. and got paints and glue and all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So they, I they must have bought the names. Yeah, maybe they bought the rights to the name or something. Hey, Bill, welcome. He's, Bill's in Thailand. Hi, Bill. That's cool. <coughs> hey, Closet Branch, what's up? Michael McCarville said something about uh, probably like your local store can order from somebody, you know, with their distributor, their supplier, and get what you want. You might yeah. Well, Hobby, Hobby Town's got their, you know, you can go online and look at their site and they have stuff that they don't carry in the store a lot of times. Right. And you can order that stuff. And I have ordered some like uh, Woodland Scenic stuff from them before, specific uh, ballast stuff that I wanted that they didn't carry in the store and they got it for me in a week. Um, but for like trains and stuff, they're not going to order Blackstone. No. You know, no. they're not going to order anything from Blackstone to have them, you know, to get you in the store. They're not going to do that. That's not, they don't carry that stuff. So they're not going to do that. Right. So if you find the Blackstone anymore, you just got to get it from whoever you can find it from. Um, 
Yeah, he's got it right here. He says uh, he thinks it would be economics. There's not enough HOM free people in the world to make a specific store. Exactly. Uh, and if you do find that store, it's going to be somewhere like Colorado, because that's where the majority of what narrow gauge, real narrow gauge is left running is in Colorado. Uh, there's some, you know, you've got the uh, uh, EBT, you got the EBT. EBT on the East Coast, and I think there's uh, one up in Maine, two foot scale yeah. still running. Oh, that Maine. Yeah, but that's it. So yeah, there's not too many of you. Uh, You're gonna get a kink in your neck, man. It's <laughs> I don't know why this does that. It's so weird. <laughs> uh, I thought your head was gonna fall off there for a minute. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's you know if so if you get into H O N three, there's a lot more now than there used to be. Yeah, it's like everything yeah. else. But right? it, it goes with it goes with everything. If if the if the market is small on it, you're not going to find much in supply. And that goes for no matter what it is. Uh, well, how much time we got here? Uh, I'm going to show this video. Um, Allie, I don't, Allie, you still here? If Allie's still here or not. She sent a video to the website, and it, I think it's where she went um, last week. Um, and it's some train train watching and then some model clubs afterwards. So I'm just going to put it's about 10 minutes, 12 minutes long. So I'm going to show you that here. And we'll come back here in just a second. Didn't it come on? It didn't come on, did it? Nope. There it is. Oh, there it is. I don't guess Allie's still here. I was hoping she'd still be here. Probably went to bed. <laughs> no doubt. But though, yeah, those are kind of interesting hopper cars. They look like covered hoppers. Yeah, yeah. they look pretty cool. That just looks like a beanie spring break. Almost looks like that was clean. A little commuter train. Yeah, it's a little commuter. That's a cool spot. Yeah, I don't remember where she said she was in Australia when she, she, did like a she didn't. She didn't put anything with the information with the email. Be there on the right. Is that an engine facility there on the right? I don't know. I can't tell. Yeah, if, looks, you, if you want it to be. Looks like it. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> uh, Heath, this is in Australia, but I'm not sure exactly where. There's some more of those hoppers. We'll get a little closer look this time, maybe. Ah, uh, General Motors. <laughs> Some pretty hefty engines there, it looks like. Yeah, they're big, man. Yeah, I wonder what they pull. 
It's hard to see. Like, I don't, what's all that stuff on the underside of it? Connections, I guess? It looks like the, uh, or the dump it. Maybe connections to the tanks? Yeah, they're cool looking, though. It almost looks like they're axles. Almost, but I think they're like connections to empty the tank. Yeah, there you go. No, the bottom. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that's just where they dump. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Was that a? That looked like a bicycle. Somebody had a bicycle in between the cars. What the hell really? is that thing? Are those brake wheels? I yeah, thought it was a bicycle. That's all go by. Yeah, I think they're brakes. Brake wheels. Daniel Banks said they're four bays. Is Daniel down there in Australia? No, Daniel's not down there. No? I don't think so, no. I was thinking, Daniel, aren't you in Kansas? That's where I was thinking he was from, Kansas. James Braxton says they're coal hoppers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, they look like it. Yeah, I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, I didn't even look at the top. No, nope, Daniel's in the Ozark Mountains. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, he's a bald knobber. If they call him. <laughs> They're cool cars, though. I think I like them better than our coal hoppers. Look how smooth they are. Nope. That's prime graffiti real estate. Yeah. Yeah, I was just <laughs> noticing how little graffiti is on the side of those. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I wish she was here. Yeah, she could explain what some of these yeah, are. Maybe, ne maybe next time. Ah, uh, Daniel's in Indiana. My bad, Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, these were interesting cars when I watched the video originally. Trying to figure out what these were. They almost looked like a container. Containers or something. Yeah, you can see the lift rings on them. Uh-huh. They're not really rings. I don't know what you call them, but... Are those brakes? Wheels on the side, though? Yeah, they look like it, don't they? Like it. Yeah. True, Mike, he's a Hoosier, not a ball driver. <laughs> yeah, Dwayne says it's probably trash of some sort. They do that here, too. They have little containers like look that. How, look how big the wheels are, though. I was just getting ready to say, those are look like awfully big wheels for a freight car. Yeah. Even the battery cars is smaller. Yeah, they could yeah, be. That could be. There's nothing really to. They don't look very long, but it's hard to gauge anything. Yeah, they look like U.S. trucks, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they still use brake wheels. Weird. Do they still put brake wheels on modern cars? Yeah. Yeah. Do they? Yeah, yeah. If you don't have air pressure, you don't. Or, well, I guess yeah. you technically would have brakes without air pressure. Oh yeah, you still got to have hand brakes. Yeah. yeah. I never yeah, noticed. Still on modern cars. Yeah. Yeah, I never noticed.
Oh, that's a layout. Now there's a the broad curves for those cars. <laughs> yeah. I mean, taking scenery out. <laughs> Get them too tight. I wonder what they are. Auto racks? I don't know. Kind of looks like it. I don't know. Box cars? I don't know. Big. That's a good shot. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, like the mustache on the front. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I like the lights on the vehicles. That's cool. Mike says flat car ship kangaroos. <laughs> we lost 10 people in chat as soon as you started the video. Shame on you guys. Yeah. Oh, well. What gauge and scale are Australian railroads? I do not know. I know Ali's told us before, but I don't remember. I'm pretty sure the scale is one to one, just like they are here. <laughs> I don't know if he's talking about the, the the model. I think most of these are S scale. Didn't she say S scale was real big down there? Or is that just what she had on the model stuff? No, Bernard, we started the regular time. Yeah, you didn't reset your clock. <laughs> I, I was thinking that they had, as far as the, the gauge goes, I was thinking the dirt railroads were the same four foot, eight inches or whatever it is that they are here. Is that not true? I, I don't remember. Look at those cars. They got like little roofs on the end. Yeah, that's for the hobos. Yeah, it must be. That's nice they of them. I think they're homeless serious there in Australia, apparently. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you better stop and flag that crossing. There's no lights on it. <laughs> yeah. On either side, <clears throat> their, their sensor's not working. <clears throat> Ooh, some shiny cows. What if they wax their cows down there? Yeah, this is almost over. Yeah, I was hoping I was hoping Allie would be here for this, but probably maybe should have started earlier. Daniel Banks says the cows were wet. Is that what it was? Just wet? Sweaty cows? It happened Sweat. to be a rain just passed by. Well, he says they use baby oil on them. <laughs> And Maybe well, that's a nice scene. Well, that's pretty cool. I always like the Garrett's, those are pretty cool. That's a hell of a yep. right there. All righty. That's that. What's with the airplane wing? Uh, I guess she flew to that location. Okay. The only thing I can think of, she had the rental car in there too. <laughs> I'm not sure why she'd have the uh, rental car in there, but 
Anyway, Ooh. thank you, Allie, for that. Well, that's yeah. pretty cool. That was cool. And we got about five minutes left. Any, anybody else got anything they want to talk about? It was different. I got, free, the cows. I got free time coming this week, so hopefully I'll start my bench work. Oh, cool. Cool. Are you going to uh, document it in videos? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. There you go, yeah. And don't just don't put Judy Garland in it, okay? I won't. Uh, I'm not that creative. <laughs> well, why why does Heath want Gail to smack Dennis? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It probably wouldn't take much coaxing to get her to do it, though. No. I, mean, <laughs> I, I usually get it at least twice a day, whether I deserve it or not. Uh, That's rough, man. <clears throat> I have to admit, I like Gail's sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yesterday, I had to teach her how to eat chips without them going into her eye. It was, it was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you had to be there. Well, she was sitting in the chair next to me. She goes, "Ow! Oh, I got a chip in my eye." I'm like, how do you get a chip in your eye? <laughs> well, that, that turned yes. into me in front of her for about five minutes. And, you know, it's always a good time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, you got to take your you got to take your shots when you get the chance. Yeah. Yeah. And then run for cover. <laughs> <After that. laughs> yeah. Uh, says you better stop, Dennis. You know you're going to get paid back for that. Too right? late. <laughs> yeah, it's too late. She's she's just waiting for the video to end, so uh, the live stream to end, so she can smack him around a little bit. <laughs> you can't see it, but I've got a cot over there underneath one of my other tables. I can sleep out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, That's not too bad, though. At least you don't have to go far to work on the layout. Yeah, and right now because, we don't eat in the house anyway, so it's actually more comfortable out here in the morning. Yeah, you might be out there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're still without the, the furnace. Yeah, I'm going to make a decision on that sometime in the next week or so. Well, you know, I don't throw over a furnace, but I know I'm going to need an air conditioner by probably by the 1st of May for sure. <clears throat> well, luckily we're over the, the real cold weather, hopefully. When does it start getting hot? So start, I guess it, it depends on your definition of hot. Uh, yeah. You know, hot it'll, you it'll, be, it'll be above 90 before the end of May, I'm sure, at some point. <laughs> Better late than never, Brian. <laughs> hey, Brian. Hi, Brian. <clears throat> Brian missed all the fun. Yeah. Still got to get you on the show, Brian. Yeah, yeah you need to send out. Shoot, yeah. me, shoot me an email, Brian. So this goes out to anybody else too. If you want to be on the show, contact Claude or one of us. And yeah, we'd like to have some of you guys on here to uh, talk about your stuff, your layout. Yeah, get you on here and show us what you're doing, and or just come on and bash everybody like we do. Yeah, <laughs> take the pressure off of us. Yeah, yeah, we're fair game, that's for sure. Uh. <laughs> it's, oh, Ant Anderson says, is that a cast iron frying pan I hear in the background? But we got probably a 12 pounder in the house. <laughs> um, you these both you can't with this swing mechanism. it as fast because it's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we're at the end of our hour, guys. Uh, I love doing the show. <laughs> I get a chuckle every week. Uh, anyway, hopefully everybody had a good week last week and have a good one this week. And a good rest of your weekend. And guys, thanks for being here. And yeah, we'll so, see if we can dig something up for next week. <laughs> yeah. See everybody later. Bye. Yeah. Hey, see guys. Care.